Welcome to episode where we talk about <laughs> the news. 33? 33. All right. We talk about the news season and we do season two. When do we turn to season three? Is Number that the 50? grabber? Is that the grabber? Episode 33? We're going to be talking news. about news that is probably all over the place. And we get the headline and then we decipher the article for you. All hmm. real estate. He doesn't know what I'm going to talk about. I don't know what he's going to be talking about. Let's talk about a big purchase to start it off. NYU has purchased Kipps Bay Residential Tower for two. Talk about it. Kips Bay. Whoa. He's got a listing that you should buy in Kips Bay. Yeah. That's Beautiful. A, this is a great article, Charles. Excellent Let's hear about segue. it. Segue. They, NYU, bought this building for $210 million. That's it. That's it. That's all it costs to get into Kips Bay. The university paid $210 million for a home at East 33rd Street. They don't know what they're going to do with it, or at least that's what they didn't tell the Commercial Observer where I got the article. Uh, this is very interesting, though. Listen to this uh, history. 33rd Street. I bet I know which 33rd. building. On second? Uh, yes. No. Uh, uh, it's closer like to Murray first. Hill, but... 377. Yeah. Yeah. So the name of it. Uh, so it was purchased originally by Avalon uh, at $173 million. Then in 2019, $103 million was put in to renovate it. So they are in for two hundred and eighty million dollars. <laughs> Simple math there. However, listen to this: NYU assumed all of the debt. They don't know what they're going to do with it, but it is obviously a residential building. It's also right near probably a lot of hospitals that are over there. So hmm. assuming that I was they say are bars. going to, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> two hundred ten million to put some people in there. <laughs> it's two hundred nine units though, so it's a big building. 209 that's units? 209 units. So it would be wow. interesting what they're going to do with it. That's like a million dollar a unit. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Do you think it's worth it? It's very interesting how big these universities are getting. Even in Columbia University, Columbia, Columbia University has been expanding rapidly. It's crazy how much real estate they're buying up there. They're either buying it and holding it, uh, but they're sitting on cash. NYU has expanded like tremendously. I actually, this is the last thing and I'll let you talk. I saw a TikTok. The guy was saying that it's $90,000 to attend NYU and that does not include housing. Yeah. I'm that's crazy. 90,000. That's not including food and books and transportation and living. $90,000. And let's think about this. That's crazy. The expenses for living are probably one of the highest. Oh, yeah. So I Especially get messaged all the time from parents who don't necessarily want their kids in the dorms. So they look for rental apartments. And most yep. of the rental apartments don't allow 3, students to stay there. Or they're way over what they're going to yeah. end up spending. So interesting. I, I think it's a good buy. I, I think mean, it's a great not? buy. Yeah. It's a long-term buy. Student housing. Yeah. Very, very reliable. Student housing or they have NYU Langone over there. Yeah. So they and a can, very good uh, medical tenant, center. Uh, a very good creditor. Debtor, yeah. Whatever. What is your article? My article. You might have seen it on LinkedIn yesterday. Oh wow! Yes, I did. The, I actually liked the post too. Oh, that's very good because it hit the news that a an apartment at 432 Park Avenue, one of the famous uh, Raphael Vinolet. Ooh. Uh, Beautiful building. That it's is, the pencil building. Yes, everybody knows about it. Everybody passes by. You see it as you're driving into the city. That had a record sale, uh, but the article was about how it was originally asking $130 million wow. for 8,000 square feet, and now it wow. uh, was last asking $92 million, and the rumor is that it went into contract for $70 million. Wow. So, $70 million. Half, almost half the asking. Half the asking, and it was, half the you know, price completely foot. redesigned. You know, people don't just buy these uh, 50 plus million dollar homes and live in the stock edition. Yeah, you have Home to, Depot special. Yeah, no. You go in with your designer. This one had been totally revamped by a uh, design firm from Japan. Top of the line, obviously. Yeah. Uh, because you have to factor that in because you say, oh, well, it, it sold for half the price that it was originally asking, but the guy bought it for $56 million. 
He bought it for fifty six million. Yeah. Wow. So he obviously put a lot of money into it, but you know, lo and behold, was able to sell it for a profit. So. Oh, the owner bought it at fifty six. Yeah. Then he put in. They so, didn't obviously know. Probably you know a couple million into it. Definitely. Wow. He made a profit on the sale. Good for him. Yeah. I don't I think like anybody the, sells for a loss in New York City. <laughs> yeah. Well, there is one for sale by owner that has been on the on the market. So they're competing with resales with new development that still hasn't sold. So it's very interesting. Mm, I don't know if over there there's new development still. Oh, really? No. Oh. No, no, no. They're all they sold out? They did a great job selling that out. Okay. But there have they been the problems in that wave. building and lawsuits yeah. with the owners against the designers and some elevator issues and this and that out of cover. People off. said there's creaking oh. when it's windy. Yeah. Well, that's what a building does well, when it's that tall the, it moves. There was one person, I guess, who was stuck on the elevator for a long period of time. <laughs> and they probably made an Instagram quite a and maybe a Google review. But yeah. Moving on to more commercial real estate. I, I had this real big, deep intuition to talk about commercial real estate. Why? The FDIC, I think because of your story yesterday on oh, Instagram, it, it inspired me. The FDIC said it is marketing and starting the process of marketing the signature bank, the failed signature bank, uh, their commercial portfolio, $33 billion. $33 billion of real estate, commercial real estate, uh, and I should say uh, residential as well. Uh, so they just started the process of letting people know whoever's going to be able to afford it. So they're not actually going to sell $33 billion. They want to offload it and have kind of about 12 to 14 different portfolios that buy it. So listen to this, though. This is very interesting. So the majority of the multifamily part of that portfolio, $15 billion of that are rent controlled and rent stabilized. 15 billion. Commercial properties. Yeah. Hmm. So 15 billion of the 33. So almost half of that are rent stabilized, rent controlled. Um, and in total, Signature had 60 billion of loans. So they've already secured financing for or offloaded, I should say, sixty bill or thirty billion dollars. So it's very interesting, you know, when everyone's talking about commercial pennies on the dollar. Yeah, these <laughs> folks are coming in and offering nothing what was probably the fair market value about four years ago. So it'll be it would be very interesting. We were actually talking about it this morning. Is that it will be interesting what happens with retail? But personally, I think commercial will reevaluate itself. But there's a lot of people going back to work. Obviously, you have the work from home, but I, I'm not as scared commercially as maybe other cities, like maybe San Francisco or you know Austin right, or right. something like that. Like New York City, it's not getting bigger. <laughs> There's one thing that people love to do in New York, and that is work. Yeah, <laughs> so, walking to you know. work was a mob scene today, and they're yeah. all going to the office. Yep. They're back, and it's the summer. Yeah, and you can't uh, open up any news articles without seeing that they are calling people back into the office. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter what ranking you are at this point. You need to be in the office. Airbnb's city's crackdown is starting. Here's what to expect. This is big. Oh, it is big. It's big news, and it started uh, yesterday. So uh, it has begun. Hosts need to register to with Airbnb and be approved by the city. So I think I read 15,000 applications and 250 were approved. Wow. <laughs> yeah, is that so, true? It's something unbelievable. Holy cow. Like there was a ton of applications, very very few were approved. It's a way that the city can really clamp down on Airbnb. Obviously, this has been an ongoing battle for a long time. Years. The city's, yeah, years. The city has had it out for Airbnb. There's tons of rules and regulations behind it. If you want somebody to stay with you for under 30 days, it you need to be in the apartment. Yeah. <laughs> so what uh, Airbnb person is going to want to go and live with, with somebody else, basically? Yeah. It's, uh, they make it so bas that you don't want to do an Airbnb. So yeah, that's how well, the city's take the on. main driver was the hotel industry because there's a huge tax that they do not collect. So the hotel industry said that 
New York City, you're losing out on this amount of money because they said one, this was years ago too, they said one million nights are being lost in one year because of Airbnb. So imagine one million nights. So in other words, that's essentially how many people over how many apartments over how many days are rented out and they said it was a million you just that seems high but not surprising <laughs> well yeah you you divide it up by how many apartments were probably this is throughout the city this is just think about this not to it's a lot of money you know like, here we go if you were coming into new york city and you really didn't know very much about it and like i've stayed in airbnbs all over the place if i was coming into new york i don't think i'd really want to stay in no like you go to a hotel you go to somewhere that's going to be like safe and secure and you can like talk to the Clean. manager you know people yeah. aren't like staring at you and whatnot in some random apartment building i never thought that airbnb would really work out in new york well it's a good opportunity that is not going to be coming to fruition because that's probably the end of it but that's very interesting oh, something to keep an eye on yeah the only way to do an airbnb properly is buy a townhouse and have it as a multifamily, and that's the only way well if you did that you'll have to register with the city now and you that's have to live with the people <laughs> yeah. so they come and go in the building yeah that's really what it comes down those to. those 30 day minimums is what they've always really well that's what it's zoned about. for yeah. yeah hotels are under 30 days Anyway, so those are the four articles. Which ones did you like? Which ones did we miss? In general, Eric, what they sh what should they do? They should like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And we're going to be coming live every single Wednesday, giving you the best news articles. Are you subscribed to my channel? I am. You should be. We will end it right here. <laughs> Have a great day, and we'll talk to you next week.